every year this park sees thousands of outdoor enthusiasts and every year there's reports of people being lost stranded out here even though there's a well-established trail here people will wander off the trail looking for berries following wildlife whatever it may be and they end up getting lost maybe even injured so one of the things I want to do while I'm out here today is kind of get off the beaten path look around see what kind of resources are out here uh, maybe someone will watch this and be out in an area similar to this and we can learn some of the resources some of the things we can do if we were lost or stranded out here so right now I'm still on the established trail but I'll find a good spot up here somewhere get off the trail and we'll see what we can find One of the things I'm always looking for when searching for resources is these dead stumps like you guys just saw me chop a piece off with my knife. And what I'm getting there is a small piece of fat wood. And you can see in there, this wood is ingrained with pine sap. What happens is when the tree dies, gravity takes over, the sap makes its way down towards the bottom and ingrains itself in the wood. And if you sniff it, you get a nice turpentine smell from it. It means you got yourself a good piece of fat wood. You can make shavings with this and be an excellent fire accelerant, fire starter when it's wet and cold. You can see I've got some snow on this piece. But when it's wet and cold like this, get some shavings, get your fire started, throw a couple pieces like this on there as kindling and it'll keep your fire going. So a tree here has another thing that I'm always looking for when I'm trying to get resources out here is this Spanish moss. Some people call it old man's beard. But you can usually find it hanging off these branches like this, which is keeping it off the ground and able to dry out a little bit. You collect enough of that, you get yourself a nice bird's nest. Throw some of the fat wood shavings in there and that'll catch a spark, get your fire going pretty easily. Here's another great example of a resource you can look for. Find a tree that has some damage on it and it'll have actual just sap leaking out of it. And you can grab some of this, take it along with you and it just makes another great fire accelerant help keep your fire going in this cold wet weather. So we'll grab some of this, throw it in our pocket, and carry it along with us. As I was walking along, I found this dead branch. You can see it's been twisted. And all I need to do is break that off. And I don't even have to sit here and carve feather sticks or small kindling. This branch is already providing it for me. So while I've been out here, you guys have seen me looking for resources to build a fire. That's because I believe that your priorities of survival are going to be dictated by the region, the climate, you know, a lot of, a lot of different uh, variables in there. And so to me, on a day like today, fire is going to be my number one priority. And your priorities being fire, water, shelter, and food. Out here it's cold, there's a lot of snow. You guys have seen the stream that I've been walking around and so water is definitely not an issue. But I've got to have fire to process that water. I've got to have fire to warm up, to cook any food or game that I find out here. Um, and while I've been walking I've been looking for areas for shelter. So I found a pretty good spot here that I would actually shelter up for the night. A lot of deadfall, I can make a debris shelter, and obviously I've got that stream behind me. I can collect some of that up, boil it, and process that. So we're going to work on some fire. I think that's my number one priority right now. 
speaking of trying to find some food, this little mouse is walking right up on me. If I absolutely had to try to catch that little guy, I don't even have to try to catch him. He's coming right up to me, going inside one of my gloves. Definitely wouldn't be hard to catch today. Seems to be a friendly little fella. You're lucky, buddy. I'm just making a video. I'm not hungry right now. I pulled a little piece of jute twine out of the back of my pack and I use a piece of hacksaw blade for my fire striker. If you just take the blade part, scrape on that jute twine, fluffs it up really good. Just throw that in there. Now that we've got the fire going and a way to process water, and my mouse ran off, my next priority would be food. And I found these holes by this tree. I actually had a cheese stick with me today. So we're gonna go ahead, and try to bake these little guys out. Some cheese. No matter what lives in this hole. Maybe they'll come out and they're hungry. Now obviously I'm doing this more for fun. Uh, if I was in a true survival situation, I would have set up snares around these holes and used a lot less cheese, kept the cheese for myself, and I would have caught the mouse that I saw earlier. But we're just doing this for fun. See if I can bait something out of that hole. I never really did see where that mouse went after we ran off. So we'll just sit here for a little bit, see if we can uh, get someone to come out and visit. Well, like always, I wanted to show you guys a piece of gear that I carried with me today. And that piece of gear today is my SE6. I picked this up from the knifeconnection.net and the reason I bought it from them is they have a build your knife option on their website. And so I was able to get it with the custom scales and the custom kydex sheet and also the fire steel loop. You can get multiple colors from them, different uh, color schemes on the scales, but the biggest reason I ordered from them is because in their scales, they put that palm swell in there. And I would always heard that is one of the biggest complaints about the factory SEs is the flat squared off scales on them. But I just picked this up. I'm not going to do a review on it until I use it a little bit more. Okay, this is the first time I've carried it and used it. But uh, I've never really been big on larger knives. I usually carry something smaller like the SE3 or the SE4. But I heard everyone raving about the SE6. And so I figured I'll pick one up, carry it, try it out, see how I like it. And so far... So far I like it. Uh, with the finger toil, you're able to choke up on a little bit, get some fine work done, pull back a little bit, and get some chopping done. So, never know. Maybe I'm converted to a large knife. We'll see. 
All right, so the fire has died down. I uh, got some water processed from the stream. I was able to warm up a little bit. Uh, we're gonna drink some of this water now that it's cooled off. And uh, I know I said this was a good place for a shelter, but I am just out here for the day. Uh, we're gonna pack up, move on, and just make our way back towards the vehicle, see what we can find. Never know, maybe there's some wildlife out now and uh, we'll get off the trail again and just see what we can find. Just off to the side of the trail, saw this little bird's nest. And if I was still looking for resources for fire, I would take that. And just like we make with Spanish moss or tinder, it's exactly what it is, is a bird's nest pre-made for us. But pretty much done for the day. A little bird might come back to that in the spring, so we're gonna leave it there for them. I just spooked up some white tails. Let's see if we can get a little closer and get them on camera. There's a couple of them right there. Cool is that you guys? I was able to walk up to about 30 yards of these white tails and they keep getting a whiff of me and they'll get spooked and run a little bit but they keep coming back towards me checking me out see what I'm doing but uh, they're just hanging out that's really cool to see Well, I'm back here at the vehicle, back in civilization. So that was a fun hike, guys. Um, as I was out today, you know, we talked about it, uh, setting up priorities of survival, uh, seeing what kind of resources we can come up with. The entire time I was out there, I had uh, pretty deep snow, had a couple streams near me. So water was never a high priority. Um, to me, out here today, fire was the number one priority. Um, I would have had to process water if I got it out of the stream or melt snow. Uh, warm myself up. I could have caught that mouse. I could have cooked him over the fire. Um, while I was burning the fire, I could have made shelter and found food. And that's something you guys always want to look at if you get in a survival situation is your survival priorities. You know, obviously if it was 100 degrees, um, water would probably be my number one priority before fire or shelter. But then again, depending on where you find your water, you've got to have fire to process that water. But in dire need, you can drink unprocessed water. You're taking a risk of giardia or any other uh, pathogens you might get from that water. So fire to me is always really high on the priority list. Um, water definitely being number two, if not number one. For you guys, we had a great day out here today. I appreciate you watching, and I hope to see you soon. Go out and live.